What's going on everybody? It's Cheesy and welcome back to another F1 2019 career mode episode. This is a uh, part of the uh, BWT Racing Point career mode, so I hope you all are doing well. This is a long one uh, and this is one of the commentator ones, so stay tuned. So I hope you guys are all doing well, uh, staying safe during this coronavirus time. So this is pretty interesting. Uh, interesting race we're here at uh france so circuit day i believe it is paul ricard i believe that's the circuit name so the circuit of paul ricard and that that's the name of the circuit so we'll be racing here today we are number one in the standings so looking good for the uh personal championship all right the driver's championship the driver the constructor's championship has a uh, pretty bunch been sealed off by mercedes Petronas Mercedes uh, because they are going uh, next to me on the podiums when I get a first place finish they're 2-3 uh, when I get a third place finish they're 1-2 so they're basically cutting everything off and a li one thing that I would like appreciate fixed in this game is uh, when you back out of a race it saves the race progress but it doesn't save everything that, that you've done uh, after that so like this uh, right now that we're, we're, we're having to I'm having to just look through and just click advance uh, It doesn't save that so it isn't uh, too bad, but it hurts when your uh, Your respect level is going down and uh, <laughs> So um, <laughs> just some jokes about that. I uh, know but we have uh, the messages I don't really read the interview transcripts because they don't affect us but as you guys can see we have pretty good stats, our uh, total points pretty high, our uh, pole positions pretty high, and I think that uh, this is a good place to go. So we're going to be hopping into FP1 here, and hopefully we can uh, set a fastest lap, that's always the plan. Uh, didn't I hop into FP1? Hello? Ah, uh, my controller disconnected, I think. Something like that. Uh, I don't know what was going on. Uh, but we'll have a dry qualifying, dry, uh, race. But, um, that, that's, that's what will be going on. And we'll be upgrading. It said our arrow was down, but we've had upgrades come in for that. And we have enough development points to get that uh, major upgrade, and I think uh, we want to do so. So we have uh, boost boost that up, and now we'll hop into FP1. Hello and welcome to a wet and dreary circuit, Paul Ricard, and the first free practice session of this weekend's French Grand Prix. So it does seem like it's raining outside, and definitely uh, we'll need to go with the wet tires instead of the intermediate, which uh, isn't fun. And we're going to be going out into the track program. Uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce that word if you guys have been watching multiple episodes. I cannot uh, do so. So uh, we'll be hopping here. And I th think that uh, we might have to adjust the brake bias. I've seen uh, that talked about a lot in the F1 community. And I know from experience that that is uh, what you need to do. So um, we'll have to see how it goes before. Uh, just to Because we don't want to mess anything up but we do want to change things if it is necessary and of course we will have slower times but we do want to get the most out of these practice laps and I will be going into multiple practice laps um, but you guys won't see that because well, this is a long episode so grab your popcorn and uh, sit back and relax and watch and enjoy the uh, formula uh, experience so going through the first couple uh, gates, we're doing pretty all right. There's a uh, multiple chicanes there in this uh, track. You have 
uh, high speed high speed corners that are uh, make make for good overtaking zones. Uh, if you guys can get good exits and good entries and be on the power really early, I know this this straight here, and we have another straight here, another straight ahead of it after the chicane that make for uh, great overtaking opportunities. And I think that this is where I'll, I'll be doing most of my overtaking if I'm not uh, at the front or front row. That's what I'm hoping to. And uh, I'll, I'm going to be adjusting the brake bias here because it is in such a heavy braking zone. And I believe you want to turn it down. Um, so you have, uh, you just have to mess with it a little bit, but you want it lower uh, to help you out. And I think that uh, that's something that we'll want to be doing. Uh, so we missed that gate here. And this is what, that was the uh, overtaking spot that I was talking about. Just trying to get uh, good slipstream and uh, push by people. But obviously we don't have anybody and no DRS with the rain. But coming through the last sector here, uh, lots of corners, uh, tight circuit. So it is, a, I'm saying it's like narrow, I guess you could say. The, the circuit doesn't span a lot of land. That's, that's what I'm going for. Like similar to Monaco, Monaco's streets are uh, very close to each other, even historic Monaco back to back. So this is uh, similar. So not a lot of uh, land that this track takes up. Obviously it's long but not too uh, wide in that sense. So we have a good uh, first lap, but I'll be going through uh, the second lap talking to you guys too, uh, to see if we can just do better, and because to compensate for me not talking to the race, because I can't be bothered, man. It is a long race, so I hope you guys just enjoy the sound of the V8 engines, uh, the Formula cars, the V8 sound, uh, and Jeff talking to you. Uh, it was pretty fun race. I think I enjoy just watching cars go around. Uh, not not around, but just have their have their ways. So, and uh, actually, next episode I'm actually going to be talking through it, uh, the full thing. Even though I said I would go back to back because uh, Austrian Grand Prix is my favorite Grand Prix favorite track. Pretty fun, and I think I should be doing well. So again, we're sliding out on that corner. I don't know uh, what's going on. I think it's the wet rain, uh, a lot of standing rain. I'm trying to get a, get a look on the rain area, rain surface, and it doesn't look too bad, but you can see the dirty air and the wetness coming out of our back tires and us sliding around, so uh, it's, it'll make for difficult driving conditions. And I just wanna keep, keep an eye out on uh, what's going on around us uh, I think that this view is a little bit more helpful when you have rain so you can check your uh, back uh, back tires to make sure uh, they're not uh, slipping out on you uh, but I would say that this lap is not better than the last in fact uh, we had a more greens and one purple or one red excuse me but that is uh, the practice session, and I'll catch up with you guys uh, once we're back in the workstation and once we're uh, heading into qualifying. So, uh, end of free practice one now, and uh, I believe we were on top. I didn't catch it, but it was pretty fast. So, uh, we'll be moving on to the uh, qualifying here and to the workstation. And just a heads up, we did turn up the difficulty, I believe, to 60 uh, last episode, so higher difficulty. Uh, and also we changed the race so this race is 50% uh, I can't change that now I'm hoping that I was trying to turn it up 25% but it is 50% uh, and no backing out now because uh, we're so close to the race time so no reputation increase decrease stays the same uh, I am not sure about that I think that I, I deserve a little bit more which is alright and I'm working my way towards becoming a veteran so dry track conditions that's nice to know appreciate that jeff so not enough ref or we do have enough resource points for that aero update upgrade and we'll have two coming in now uh one minor one major uh and that'll probably come in within two weeks two races uh i don't know any sooner but let's listen up and uh, i'll catch you guys in the car for our flying lap Welcome to qualifying for this weekend's French Grand Prix. 
The teams are making their last-minute adjustments before the lights go green and the fight for pole position gets underway. And I'm here, of course, with Anthony Davidson on what has turned out to be a very pleasant day indeed. No weather to interfere, no problems on the track, so absolutely no room for error. That's right, Crofty. It's looking good out there at the moment. Each team will have their own game plan for this session. And of course, once the cars leave the garage, they'll be under Park Fermi conditions. So any last-minute adjustments need to be done right here and now. Beyond that, it's all up to the driver. Who can keep their tyres in the right temperature? Who can hit their apexes? No race fuel on board these days, of course. These are the fastest cars we've had in a long, long time. And it's right here in qualifying where they're at their absolute peak. Let's get started. All right, now, so we're hopping in the car now. And I'm going to be trying a custom setup. I haven't used one of these, and I think that uh, it, it should be a fun time to do so. And... I think that you can mess around with all the all these things if you don't it just turns into a balanced setup so I just wanted to look through that and I didn't I moved through a little things but not major upgrades so for the power unit now uh, we have some minor wear on some things uh, it's looking all right and uh, I don't think I, I don't know about gearbox stuff so I like I have not, not not sure about all this, but I can uh, upgrade them and I can change them out uh, to have less wear. All right, so we're now out for our flying lap. We crossed the line and uh, we're in P1 up to the first straight. So maybe those power engines, our power unit engines, have uh, helped us out here. And we take it a little bit wide off the curb, but nothing uh, too dangerous. Nothing that's going to harm us too much. We take it nicely into this first right-hander and coming around that bend, uh, another right-hander and we have this uh, nice straight. We have a purple first sector, always good to see, always happy with that, but we're now in uh, P2, so Hamilton did get a better uh, exit off that uh, last corner into the straight than we did. Deer us wide open and we'll maybe have to late, late break to try to get that uh, position or that time back, it isn't next necessarily position, but just time. I think that we'll have the advantage during this uh, area just because of um, our air upgrades and uh, the less downforce that we have that we can just uh, seam through that. And I think that uh, being, being technical through this section is very important and the AI just can't do that the same way that uh, driver can uh, in with the controller or pad uh, or a uh, wheel so come through this last sector it'll be a very close head-to-head -head battle with Hamilton and I think this AI has uh, definitely uh, uh, made, made it more difficult of course uh, but coming through the line and I think Hamilton will have pull no, no chance of catching up with him now just uh, tip your hat to him and uh, you can't be disappointed by that result it was a fair result, and uh, I think that we'll just have to push during the race tomorrow. And uh, good, good result. So four tenths behind, and so Ferrari and uh, Sergio Perez is pretty, pretty far up there. So that's good. So this AI uh, change has been uh, fair, and it has been a good idea to make the races more interesting for you guys. If we can push it up, maybe even more, then uh, we can get towards the back of the grid and uh, have, having to work our ways up uh, where racing point should probably be uh, at, but we're coming off a uh, a few bad bad races not not nothing too too spectacular so hopefully uh, we can make a spectacular uh, race this uh, this this weekend so from the qualifying we get a couple performance points resource points uh, nothing too major um, and the reputations are increased now, so uh, we we'll keep on moving up. I don't think I want to change teams uh, right, mid-season because uh, that's not how contracts usually work. Uh, but my value is uh, much less than my contract value, which is uh, pretty good. So they're, they're yeah, I'm giving them a run for their money, uh, if you could say that. But it's all right, and uh, we're looking back at. Uh, our driver's stats and we're doing pretty well 
and I think I'm very pleased with that. So uh, we'll listen in now to the race uh, commentators before we hop in the car. Welcome along then to the circuit Paul Ricard, home of the French Grand Prix, home race of the Renault team, and of course a number of the drivers on the grid as well. Of the 14 races held here up until 1990, five were won by a Frenchman, and four of those, of course, were Alain Prost. I wonder who'll add their name to that winner's list today. The circuit Paul Ricard then, a 3.6 mile track, 25 miles east of Marseille. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, with the main overtaking chance expected going into turn eight. Top speeds today should be around 205 miles per hour. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. What do you make of their performance so far this season? They've been avoiding mistakes and have had solid pace, so it's been a good season so far, but whether they can keep that up long term remains to be seen. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and Mr. Monaco completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Vettel, Verstappen, Valtteri Bottas, and Perez, Faber, Leclerc, Raikkonen, and Daniel Ricciardo, Albon, Norris, Roman Grosjean, and Butler. Gasly, Giovinazzi, Daniel Kvyat, and Kevin Magnussen. Kubica and George Russell ends our grid lineup. And now it's time to head down to the track. Finishing the top 11. See what you can do. All right, Jeff, appreciate that. So, guys, uh, I'm not going to be uh, commentating this because it's such a long race. 50% is uh, a long time, and I really can't be too bothered to do that but uh we have a new strategy so it's a three stop race uh which is kind of interesting i don't know if i'll take all three stops um just maybe take two and uh stay out for a while because if you do a two stop that's uh an undercut and is uh pretty smart to try to do that but i think that that might be the, the smartest strategy but it's showing me that the projected lap time is uh, a lot less and I don't, I don't know why, because if everyone's else pitting, then you have that whole lap to uh, stay to yourself. I mean, I guess they do have uh, new tires, but uh, I'm not sure. So I'm not, not going to be using that strategy. Turn that to its original, and uh, I think that, that that might be the strategy to go on, just whatever uh, they went on. But the, you can see that two softs is a little bit slower uh, because of just the wear and amount. So five lap, five lights, and away we go in P2 around the outside. So I'll catch you guys uh, at the end of the race. So stay tuned, guys, and I hope you guys enjoy this uncommentated uh, F1 racing.
brilliant stuff from Racing Point today. What a superb victory. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. Racing Point's performance today has shown that they can be competitive with the veterans of the sport. They're making their way out to the podium now as we speak, and the reaction from the crowd must be incredibly uplifting for them. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Mr. Monaco increases their championship lead. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Well, it's absolutely got to be Alexander Albon, no hesitation. He put in a performance today that's only going to build further upon his already growing reputation. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. There was also a strong showing from the McLaren team today as they make their way up the standings. Well, that was certainly an incredible weekend of racing. Be sure to join myself and Ant for more exciting Formula One action soon. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. How are you feeling after that win? Well, looks like your luck has changed. Things went a lot better than last weekend, didn't they? You're beating all expectations. Would you say we all underestimated you? You must be feeling good about winning your battle with your old F2 rival, Devon. Great, well that's everything. Fantastic podium. Well done. Keep pushing like this for the rest of the season. So we crossed the line at P1 and it is a P1 for the team. I'm very uh, happy for that. We uh, stepped up to their expectations right. definitely and uh, we were able to get that uh, first place finish for ourselves and for the team and uh, this time it isn't a uh, two three uh, Mercedes behind us actually which is pretty interesting. So guys that uh, that wraps up this video um, Stay tuned next time for uh, the Austrian Grand Prix um, My favorite Grand Prix actually. So if you guys uh, enjoyed this video be sure uh, to drop a like and uh, uh, Please uh, consider subscribing. If you guys uh, want me to play another game, want me to improve upon something, please be sure uh, to leave it in the comments. I'm always open uh, to criticism and uh, new ideas. So, guys, uh, take care and always peace.